In this video, what we're gonna do is take a look at the After Effects camera tracker. Now, while Cinema 4D does have its own camera tracker, I do find After Effects's version of it to be a lot simpler and easier to use. We will also see how we can get that uh, solved camera, as well as any solids or nulls we want into Cinema 4D to help us with compositing. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so here is the end result of what we're gonna be doing today, um, taking our tracked camera, um, and our footage from After Effects, bringing it into Cinema 4D so that we can go ahead and composite 3D elements into it. Um, so let's go ahead and dive in. I'm starting in After Effects here. I have my footage, and this is just some old footage I shot with my drone um, quite a while ago, nothing too crazy. Uh, and while I don't wanna talk too much about what makes for good footage, uh, I will say kind of the more complicated the camera move, the better, the more you have going on in your environment, your scene, the better. That's going to give whatever tracking software you're using more points to grab onto. So um, the more objects you have in front of other objects or parallax you have, that's going to help make After Effects or Cinema 4D or whatever other tracking software using uh, their job a lot easier. And what I've also found is software either tracks or it doesn't. So uh, I wouldn't spend a whole lot of time trying to you know, figure out if you can track it or doing manual tracks, depending on the software you're using, it either tracks or doesn't. Uh, now to use After Effects' camera tracker, um, it really is quite simple. Add a piece of footage to um, a composition. And like I said, I'm just using this drone footage. Go to animation and choose track camera. And honestly, After Effects from here on out is going to be doing pretty much everything for us. We're not gonna have to really click any other buttons. Um, I will go through and talk about a few other things to keep in mind though, um, as you're uh, letting this process happen. One uh, is going to be the shot type. So we can decide whether it's a fixed angle of view, a variable zoom, or even specify the angle of view. Um, you know, aside from that, the only other stuff we'll find is in the advanced section here. Uh, there are a couple of different solve methods. Uh, and so if you really wanted to, you could tell After Effects, whether it's a typical camera move or a mostly uh, flat scene, or if it's a tripod pan. And um, this is really the only thing I will try if my scene isn't solving. And even then, if it can't auto detect it, it probably isn't going to make a difference here. So typical works for everything. Um, flat scene um, would be maybe if you're trying to do just like a wall or something like that. And if you were gonna do something with like a wall uh, or a, a flat scene, tracking markers can help. Um, and then lastly, tripod pan. So if uh, the camera is not really moving, it's just kind of um, on a tripod. All right, the only other option you may want to consider in here would be the detailed analysis, which can make After Effects think a little bit harder, try to track a few more points, spend a little bit more time with this entire process. But aside from that, that is all there is to it. Uh, and so with that, rather than um, keep talking here as it's going through and calculating, I will come back once this is complete. All right, so it finished the first step, um, which was, you know, solving for all the points. It's now solving for our camera. That process generally goes pretty quickly. Uh, and at this point, it has solved for the camera, even though it hasn't created one. And while there is a create camera icon here button, um, I don't recommend hitting it just yet. Uh, we can see the average error here is 0.65 pixels, not too bad. And if we select our camera tracker, you'll now see that we can see a bunch of these tracking points. And you can start to get a sense for how things um, worked based on when you hover over these tracking points and kind of what that bullseye icon looks like, what angle it's at. And the closer it is correct to the angle you would expect to see for say like the ground here, um, the better the solve went. And you can see as I scrub through this, we have some points appear or disappear. And After Effects used you know, whichever ones it needed here. Um, what you could do is keep an eye and see if you have anything moving, right? So for instance, I have a, some of my propeller blades up here that I wanna make sure doesn't have any points, but you can always select a point um, and then get rid of it if you would like to. And you'll see it will go through and solve the camera again. So you can do a little bit of quality control yourself, but that's really it. Okay, you don't need to do any manual tracking in here. Um, once you are, 
ready to kind of move on to the next step, step, what you want to do is find a few points you like, okay? Because if you select a null, um, or not a null yet, a tracking point and right click on it, you will see a few different options here, okay? Not all of these are selected, uh, but you can create um, solid in camera, a null in camera. Really the one I want though, is gonna be set ground plane and origin. And I think we need to select a few more points to do that. So I'll just select a few more here. You can see how that's sitting pretty flat, um, which is a good sign. I can right click. And now you can see I have some of those other options enabled now, like create shadow catcher, camera on light, um, create nulls and camera, set ground plane and origin, all of that stuff, um, as well as just deleting the points. But I'm gonna set the ground plane and origin here. You really do wanna try and make sure that um, you have, you're, you're placing the origin at a good spot, and that seems like it's a good spot for me. Um, so I will do that. It also sets the ground. So that's where zero will be on the y-axis. And at this point, um, I want to do a couple of other things. I want to just create, um, you know, maybe a, a solid somewhere. So maybe I'll select those again. Probably should have just used that same selection. Um, but do create solid and camera. Okay. So now in our composition, we have our solid. We have our camera. And if we were to preview this, we can now get a sense of how well this worked. And what we're looking for here is this to look flat on the ground, or in this case, the water, and for it not to be shaking, moving around. And it seems to be doing a pretty good job. Is it perfectly flat? No, um, but it's more than good enough for a scene like this, okay? Um, so that's looking pretty solid to me, maybe a little bit shaky as it kind of gets closer here, uh, but that would be about it. And you could create more of these uh, solids if you would like just make sure you select your footage and your tracker and you could do the same thing so could create another solid here what instead what i might do is just find a couple of nulls that i like in uh tracking points and create a null from them so that way i have some um, information about this scene because when we go to export this to cinema 4d um, it's going to bring over all of these different objects here with the exception of our sequence okay so um, yeah, we're going to do that maybe. So we have that one at the beginning, which is nice. We have the null, I'm sorry, the solid in the middle there. And so maybe we'll do one towards the back just to give us a little bit of a sense of the scale here. And like I said, you could do as many or few of these as you want. Do another null. You could create a plane out here if you wanted to, whatever suits you. Uh, so at this point, you do want to make sure you have your project saved. That was something I did do. Um, while we were, uh, while the video was paused, because now what I'm gonna do is export a Cinema 4D file from this After Effects project. And pretty straightforward process, nothing too crazy here. Um, can take a second to pull up, um, but when we save out the Cinema 4D file, it will save out all of our nulls, our solids, our camera. And it's telling me here our 2D layer, uh, the footage won't come over. And that's perfectly fine because we have different ways of saving that. I can save that into my Cinema 4D file or uh, Cinema 4D folder, I should say. And there we go. Now I can go ahead and open up that file and isn't quite that one. So let's just come here and choose this one and go to our perspective view. And this is what we have at this point, okay? A little bit tricky to tell what's going on, uh, but we have a null uh, that has our camera, it has our solid um, that we created earlier in After Effects, along with our two nulls that we created in After Effects. And so the whole idea with tracking is to recreate the camera movement we had in our footage, or in this case, the image sequence, because now we can put 2D or even 3D elements now um, in the space, and it will look like it was in that scene. Okay, now it's up to us when it comes to compositing to make it look believable, but the camera movement should now be taken care of. So uh, let's do a couple of things here. What I like to do is select our null here and make sure we zero it out. Okay, it doesn't quite come in at the origin like it said it, it did when we were in After Effects. It comes in pretty close. Um, and just selecting that main null and zeroing it out is the way to go. Uh, now, if we want to be able to see our footage in here as well, what we can do is create a background object. And on 
that background, we're going to create a material. And I'm going to load in my sequence into our material here. So clicking on the browse button, it's going to take a second to pull up and choose the first image of my sequence. And I do think sequences tend to work a little bit better in Cinema 4D when it comes to trying to play them back versus say a movie file. Um, and in order to play back an animation in a material, what you need to do is go to the viewport section here. And this is just a regular Cinema 4D standard material um, is check animate preview. I can apply this to our background. All right, we can see that we have that in here now. And as we hit play, you'll notice nothing. And that's because even though we've checked the animate preview, we need to tell Cinema 4D that this is in fact an animation or an image sequence. Uh, so I'll go back to my color property. I'm gonna go into that texture now, go to the animation section, uh, find the calculate button down here, just hit calculate. Cinema 4D is gonna kind of look in that folder, recognize that it's an image sequence and set the start frame and end frame. And that really should be it. I'll also check, uncheck uh, reflectance, though it really doesn't matter because this is a background object. And from there, as we play this, we can see that we have our footage in here now. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off that work plane because I find it pretty obnoxious. Okay, but you can see as we scrub through, that's looking pretty good. Um, if we wanted to, we could create some 3D text. Realize it's pretty small, but notice how it's at the origin. All right, place it where we want to. And what do you know? Looks pretty good to me. The last thing I'll say about this is in our camera, um, it has keyframe the camera's position on every frame. Make sure not to touch that. And in the object tab, keep an eye on that focal length. That focal length is something you should be able to Google about whatever camera you use to create your footage. And in order to make things match as realistically as possible, you may want to adjust this um, to whatever you find. If you were to Google iPhone, you know, focal length or whatever drone you're using or whatever camera you're using. Um, in fact, depending on where you track your footage, this is information um, you can input before to help the software get a little bit more of a um, better track. Though I haven't found it 100% necessary in tracking. I do like to do it um, at some point though, just because I want my camera to match and any objects we add, we want to have the same focal length so that it, it matches. It's distorted slightly the same, that type of thing. But that is essentially it for our camera tracker. I'm gonna deselect that camera so we don't see um, the path there. Uh, let me know if you would like to see, you know, a, a more in-depth look at the compositing of something like this, taking some text or another 3D element and adding it to some tracked footage and making it look believable with lighting and materials. That's definitely something I can do. Um, I'm also planning on doing a video on the Cinema 4D tracker, though, you know, the After Effects one is just so simple that I, I don't find myself using the Cinema 4D one unless I absolutely need it. But that will do it for this video. If there's anything else you would like to see, please let me know. And until next time, take care.